dear audience, it's my great pleasure today to present you my nine-month progress report to my uh, research a topic which is the new insight into risk assessment in gastroenterology. My name is Jakub Oferica, I am from Slovakia and I came here to Budapest to pursue my scientific passion uh, and I'm coming here with a vision that one day uh, every patient will benefit from uh, evidence-based approaches in gastroenterology. And for this purpose, we choose these two specific goals uh, uh, to investigate. First one is to better understand the relationship between acute pancreatitis and chronic liver disease. And second one is to investigate the relationship between ultra-processed food consumption and risk of the cancer. So here we come to my first topic, which is the systematic review and meta-analysis, where we investigation, investigating the effect of chronic liver disease on outcome in acute pancreatitis. Both of these diseases, acute pancreatitis and chronic liver disease, are one of the most common occurring in gastroenterology. And several authors observe much higher prevalence of uh, chronic liver diseases in patients with acute pancreatitis. That's something what reflect the uh, overlap in etiological and risk factor of this disease. Furthermore, chronic liver disease is connected to uh, several comorbidities and conditions predisposing this patient for worst outcome. However, we don't understand the exact nature of this relationship and how does the presence of chronic liver disease influence the outcome in acute pancreatitis. And that's our aim, is to investigate this relationship and to better understand it. For this, we choose this clinical question, how does the presence of chronic liver disease influence the outcome in acute pancreatitis? We choose pick a framework our populations are all the patients with acute pancreatitis, exposure and control is absence or presence of chronic liver disease, and primary out outcome is mortality, and secondary outcome is severity, uh, and systematic and local complications. And our hypothesis is that indeed the presence of chronic liver disease influenced the outcome in acute pancreatitis. Uh, we conducted a systematic search in November last year. We uh, identified nearly 50,000 articles. Out of them, 37 were uh, eligible to be included in our study. And here we come to the result part of our analysis. You can see here our first forest plot depicting the, our primary outcome, which is the odds ratio for in-hospital mortality. In the population of patients with acute pancreatitis, exposed and not exposed to chronic liver disease. Uh, in this case, chronic liver disease ranging from early stages to advanced chronic liver disease, uh, from multiple etiologies like uh, alcohol related liver disease, non alcoholic fatty liver disease, metabolic fatty liver disease, etc. And what you can see that the presence of chronic liver disease increased the odds of uh, having. Uh, to die during the hospitalization by 2.33 times, reaching mathematical and clinical significance. Here you can see our second forest plot depicting the severe acute pancreatitis, which is the form of acute pancreatitis associated with uh, higher mortality, uh, uh, longer hospital stay, and overall worst outcome. And as you can see, once again, the presence of chronic liver disease uh, in, uh, increased the rate of severe acute pancreatitis 2.51 uh, times, also reaching mathematical and clinical significance, furthermore uh, underlying the risk posed by chronic liver disease. Here you can see the forest plot depicting the rate of acute necrotic collection, which is the uh, early form of necrotizing pancreatitis, what is the form of pancreatitis that is associated with much worse outcomes, uh, uh, several complications like, uh, like infection, etc., predisposing patients uh, for, for uh, higher mortality. And as you can see, the chronic liver disease in increases significantly the rate of acute necrotic collection in our patients, uh, meaning that these patients need uh, really rigorous monitoring during the hospitalization and screening for the local complications. Here you can see our last forest plots depicting the multi-organ failure, which is one of the most severe complications of acute pancreatitis connected to a higher mortality rate. And as you can see, once again, 
that patients with chronic liver disease has 37% higher rate of uh, multi-organ failure, reaching clinical and mathematical significance as well. So here are the strengths and limitations of our study. Uh, the major strength is that this is the first meta-analysis investigating the relationship between chronic liver disease and acute pancreatitis. We have large sample size and diverse population from around the world, uh, including studies from Asia, Europe, and US. Uh, our limitations are that we are mostly relying on retrospective studies. We have relatively large heterogeneity for certain outcomes, especially mortality. And there were no available data on viral hepatitis and rare causes of chronic liver disease. In conclusion, chronic liver disease is a significant risk factor predisposing patients for worst outcome uh, with acute pancreatitis. There are higher rates of uh, local and systemic complications and patients suffer from uh, much, uh, much commonly with several causes of disease. Our recommendation for practice are such that these patients require more attention, especially during early phases of the disease. Uh, and during the risk stratification. Uh, as well, these patients require more intensive monitoring and screening for local and systemic complications. Uh, implications for research are such that we need more prospective data, especially in regards to the uh, role of infection or specific treatments like early or prophylactic antibiotic uh, usage or uh, albumin supplementation in specific subgroups, etc. Uh, uh, as well, uh, the chronic liver disease could be considered as a novel uh, prognostic factor or a part of the prognostic models uh, for predicting the severity of acute pancreatitis. So here is the status of our manuscript. Basically, we are finishing with supplementary, and we would like to uh, do an internal review by the end of this week. Here we come to the, um, uh, our second topic, which is the investigation of the association between consumption of ultra-processed food and the risk of the cancer. So what is ultra-processed food? Uh, according to NOVA food framework classification, uh, we can divide food into four categories. First one is the food that is uh, not processed at all, is usually fresh uh, meat or vegetable, etc. And fourth category, which is the ultra-processed food, meaning that this food contains lots of additives, uh, sugars, uh, uh, salt, etc., uh, and is highly processed. Uh, ultra-processed food was already connected to several conditions like uh, higher mortality, diabetes, cardiovascular events, uh, depression. And what is really concerning that in developed country, for example in US, 67% of total caloric intake uh, is uh, originate from, from ultra processed food. So our aim is to evaluate the risk posed, posed, posed by ultra processed food on the, uh, on the development of the cancer. For this we choose this clinical question, do ultra-processed food increase the risk of the cancer? Our fra framework is PICO, uh, where we comparing, uh, because everyone in the populations do consume some amount of uh, ultra-processed food, we do not have a proper control. That's why we will co uh, compare patients with low consumption to the patients with the most uh, consumption in, in our samples. And our outcome is risk of the cancer. And our hypothesis is that ultra-processed food increase the, the probability of developing of cancer. Uh, and clinical implication would be to identify a novel risk factor for development of the cancer. We conducted a preliminary research uh, uh, with the search key. Uh, we identified uh, our, our uh, key articles. We consulted the statisticians. This project seems to be feasible. And we will continue once we finish the the, the first project. So this is an overview. The first project should be done by, should be submitted by the end of this month and uh, next one by the end of the August. Thank you for your attention. 
have you differentiated um, uh, the background of uh, the chronic liver disease? I mean, uh, did you focus the, to uh, the liver cirrhosis or uh, viral infection? I mean, HPV or uh, C? Okay, so uh, we did not perform subgroup analysis on the etiologies, uh, mostly because there are predominantly of fatty liver disease. Sometimes they didn't specify, it, just they mentioned the fatty liver disease because there was case control studies on CTs, and they just analyzed the, the steatosis on the CT and acute pancreatitis. So there was lack of this data, and we didn't have a data for viral hepatitis, hepatitis at all. So we didn't do etiologies, but we did subgroup analysis on the stage of the disease, like early chronic liver disease comparing to the uh, uh, advanced chronic liver disease, like cirrhosis, basically. My question relates to the uh, spectrum of etiologies you see in um, uh, liver disease patients for acute pancreatitis. We all know that different etiologies come with a different risk of severe disease uh, course of AP or death, like hyperlipidemia comes with a significantly high risk of severe disease course and death. My question relates to that in this subgroup of acute pancreatitis patients who have got significant chronic liver disease, do they have the same spectrum of etiologies, the same proportion of etiologies like the generic AP population? No, no. For example, in the case of uh, metabolic uh, fatty, liver, uh, fatty liver disease, there are much higher rate of uh, hypertriacylglycemia induced AP, uh, but it's really depend on the type of the etiology of the disease. And because we couldn't evaluate every, in every single study these etiologies, uh, we, we don't have this data actually, so I'm just reporting what I read in, in my studies. May I ask you to your uh, second project? Uh, about this topic, have you found any uh, study which is a long-term prospective uh, trial? Uh, so, uh, the data for these studies, uh, we have like four key articles, uh, and they are all prospectives. Uh, usually they take uh, a previously acquired data uh, with food frequency questionnaires, and they applied the NOVA, NOVA food framework to analyze the, 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 the food. So we, the data, we have like, there are enough data uh, prospectively acquired, yes. That's, that's. Were they randomized trials? No, no, there were yeah. randomized there was observation. <laughs> Regarding the NOVA food framework, I believe that this is a Brazilian um, study, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and it's quite recent. This uh, classification is coming from the Brazilian. 2018 or so. Yeah, I think yeah, it yeah. was established by yes. uh, with the Brazilian team. Yeah. So I was wondering about what uh, are the countries that these studies that you collected are from? France, Spain, and I don't remember the third two of them. But uh, I think there are not South American any of them. Uh, my question would be regarding first project's inclusion criteria. Uh, the definition of pancreatitis, were the, the same in each study or were there uh, differences? Uh, yes, oh, we use two of three uh, criteria as usual. Uh, the only difference is when we use uh, data from the database studies in the NIS, etc. They were done on the ICD codes, but that's only in few outcomes, it's not in all, all outcomes. <laughs>